Um, so the president said today Iran is standing down. Is that how you see it? Do you expect um, further response from Iran its, or its proxies in the future? Sure. First, let me say how uh, glad all of us are, Jake, that none, we had no casualties yesterday. Yeah, and, absolutely. And Iraqi casualties as well. And my thoughts and prayers are with the passengers on that airplane that went down. Because it was not just Iranians, it was uh, an international uh, passenger list. So we should all be thinking about and praying for them as well. Um, look, the Iranians uh, should know that the president has all the cards right now. Uh, the contingency capabilities of the United States uh, gives him the capacity both to de-escalate but if necessary, to escalate in a very major way very quickly with overwhelming force. I think the Iranians know that. Uh, they had to do something. Uh, whether those missiles were, in fact, targeted uh, to uh, uh, not damage or kill any Americans, or they were just lucky that they didn't land on those, those targets, I think remains to be determined. But they are the fact that they came through a series of multiple back channels uh, trying to stand down any American uh, retaliation for that attack, I think, uh, indicates they're, that they're desperate. Uh, and I think they understand that the United States has the capability of inflicting enormous battle damage uh, on that regime. And right now, uh, that regime can't afford to have an American slap in the face that they said that they had offered to the United States. But do you think that they, that they purposely didn't kill anyone last night? Do you no, think? I, I don't think we You know. don't buy that? No, I don't think we know. I know we don't know, but what's your suspicion? You know, uh, my suspicions are they shot those missiles to those bases. Uh, hoping not to kill any uh, Iraqis, uh, but uh, with the full intent of uh, inflicting damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have no idea in the end where those missiles are going to come down. So I, I don't buy the idea that uh, they were uh, pure in their targeting with no intention ultimately of hurting the United States or Iraqi forces. One of the ways that Iran has responded in the past has been to wait a month and then some proxy stages, some devastating terrorist attack with no obvious links to Iran. Mm -hmm. Uh, it happened when the Israelis killed the leader of Hezbollah. That's right. And a month later, there was that horrible explosion killing innocent Jewish civilians in That's Argentina. Right. Two years later, another one. Uh, it happened with the Israelis again uh, when after they killed a nuclear... Uh, the Israelis are suspected of killing an, uh, a nuclear scientist. They went after, a month later, diplomats in three different countries, a bus full mm -hmm. of Israeli tourists. Is that what you expect? I absolutely do, Jake, and you framed it perfectly. Uh, look, the Iraqis, the Iranians know that there is no way that they can... Uh, compete with the United States in a conventional head-to-head uh, -head symmetric uh, uh, conflict. Uh, so they will do what they have done always in that region, is they'll mo motivate the uh, Goats Force, which is a, a special operations force, which is largely a terrorist organization. Uh, but they'll also uh, unleash many, I think, of the Shia militia elements. Uh, Khatab Hezbollah, for example, has already threatened American troops, and we killed the commander of Khatab Hezbollah in the same blast that killed Qasem Soleimani. Uh, we should see uh, other uh, Shia militia elements also acting independently or acting at the behest of Iran. We won't necessarily know, but your point is there are unconventional capabilities uh, available to the Iranians that we should anticipate. And the FBI warning is a good example of how that could unfold. And I'll also add that the Iranian cyber army mm -hmm. is something that we should be uh, very focused on at this particular moment because they can hit us in an unconventional way, but they can also hit us in the cyber domain as well. Let me uh, play for you something that President Trump said about Qassam Soleimani. Soleimani's hands were drenched in both American and Iranian blood. He should have been terminated long ago. Why wasn't he killed long ago? I think there were strategic decisions that were made that, uh, that were predicated on the sense that his being alive strategically was better than his being killed tactically. Because it would, the situation might spiral out of control. That, that is correct. And that's a difficult statement to make because, of course, the president's right. His hands are covered with the blood, not just of Americans, uh, but of many Iraqis as well as Iranians. Uh, so he, he, in fact, as when I was the commander in Afghanistan, uh, we perceived him as owning the foreign policy and security and defense portfolio from as far east as the western one-third of Afghanistan all the way to the shores of the Mediterranean and into Gaza. It was an enormous portfolio, and he had largely singular sway at the behest of the supreme leader. Um, we had him in our gun sights on a number of occasions, and the idea of ultimately of killing him has to be taken as a strategic decision because of, as you say, there's the potential really for the instability, the instability that would come from that of uh, destabilizing the region.
Was it a mistake not to shoot him before, not to go after him before? It's hard to say. Uh, again, each one of those circumstances was different. Uh, each one of those uh, occasions provided different opportunities. Uh, the president uh, weighed the intelligence that was provided to him for this particular attack and uh, decided to, uh, to kill him and to take him out, but also took out a very senior uh, Iraqi uh, militia leader at the same time.